Hello, my name is Joel Zwart and I'm the Curator of Exhibitions and Collections at Grand Valley State University. This fall, the GVSU Art Gallery is hosting Honest and Unrefined, Art Outside the Academy. Drawn from a number of collections, this exhibition dives deep into the realm of art and artists, labeled as self-taught, folk, outsider, raw, or naive. Rejecting the constraints of the art world, these artists ignore convention and experiment with materials to produce authentic, challenging, and inspiring works of art. We look forward to your engagement with these compelling pieces and the stories they relay. This exhibition is guest curated by artist, educator, and collaborator, Reb Roberts. Born and raised in New Orleans, Reb arrived in West Michigan in 1972 and enrolled at Grand Valley's William James College. He spent years working in early childhood education, a passion that continues to this day through partnerships and artist residencies. In 1999, he and his wife, Carmela Loftus, opened the Sanctuary Folk Art Gallery in downtown Grand Rapids, which represented many of the artists in this exhibition. Passionate about art and its power, Reb's distinctive painting style can be found in many public and private collections, as well as in various urban settings. In this interview, Reb unpacks the concept of outsider art and shares his thoughts on the power of art in public spaces, making art with unconventional materials, and the value of creative collaboration. We hope you enjoy it. When I was very, very young, I, one of my grandfathers kind of had this whimsical um, talent of he'd build these, these play structures in the backyard and decorate them and, and paint them with crazy faces. And I think he, I think he might have bought things that were store-bought and then altered them to the way he wanted. Um, he was a really kind of somber, stoic person. But when you went to his house, it was like amazing because he would, inside he even had these characters all over the house that you couldn't touch, they were up above, and they would move every week. So there was kind of something kind of magical. And um, I grew up in New Orleans, so that whole city is vibrant. I think I saw art as an, exp I could see art as an expression of something that kind of went, w that, that was telling a story about something else. It, one of the biggest inspirations was I worked with kids and families with preschoolers for almost 20 years in teaching and, and in administration. And I always knew that if I put out an easel and I put out paint, that it would go on forever. So if everyone was having a bad day and whatever the lesson plan was or whatever we were supposed to do, um, if, if all of the 36 students were having a tough time, I could put out easels and they would just create and create and create. And that spontaneity and that, that, that ability to, to take a medium that you would give them and just go to town especially for children who were having the most difficult time at, during that period. So I'd save those paintings and I would take it home and, and I was an adult, so I wasn't like another, I wasn't a teenager or I wasn't even, I was past college even then and I would just fill the walls. Every, every square inch in the house was filled with these children's paintings. I mean like no room to breathe. So, um, and I guess kind of thrived on that. I kind of thrived on that as, as, as an art inspiration. Um, and, and then as, as that career faded and that, that changed and I saw, my, I, I saw myself with enjoying art, I happened to, to meet a number of people in the community that introduced me, other artists that introduced me to the artists here in Hartside. Um, and that was a... Uh, that was an eye-opener for me because all of a sudden there were, there was really, as much as I loved that children's work, there were adults doing work that I was so attracted to and inspired by. And the individuals themselves, too, were, were in, in a lot of ways, I would consider them m mentors in the sense that their, their need to create, their ability to create, their choice of materials, their their willingness to work anywhere under any conditions, their, their, their um, inclusiveness of, of collaborating and wanting to be together with other artists and, and um, uh, always seeking, you know, being seekers. I also have to say that I spent time in Grand Valley um, 
in William James College. And being part of that college and being part of, the, of Grand Valley at that time, there was so much inspiration from individuals and teachers, professors, students, and all of that. And when I was going to, to Grand Valley, I, I signed up for, art, for painting classes two or three times. And I would show up for the first day and they would give me a supplies list. And I would try to negotiate that supplies list because I was paying for my own tuition at that point. And um, I would say, could I use this? Can I get my paint from the hardware store? Can I paint on old window shades instead of canvases? And then it would be no. And then I go to the second class and I'd say, can I can we negotiate here? And there was not a negotiation within that, within the structure of those curriculums for painting. So there was a little bit of restric restriction in some ways for something that I wanted to do, although there was all this freedom and other things that I was exposed to. So the painting part came later. You know, the painting part didn't, wasn't part of, of a, part of a education career, part of a formal process. It came, came more from, from, from the community. Obviously, artists, I had already met the artists in Hartside. So there was a ton of people and a ton of artwork that I really loved. And I was familiar with the neighborhood. I had already done a numerous things in this neighborhood beyond being an artist. You know, one thing about Hartside is that's why it's Hartside. It's like there's a beat on the street. And it, sometimes it's a heart attack and sometimes it's just full of love. And that was the one thing about the artist. I, I really felt that the Heartside artist had a handle on how to, to deal with when the heartbeat was irregular down there, here. And that was they were able to pour themselves into the work that they were doing and into the community that was being developed. I wasn't thinking about opening a gallery, but when I saw that Dwelling Place was developing the property at 140, I just got inspired. I had, I, you know, I knew about nonprofits. I knew a little bit about creating art, or art not a lot about the art world, um, not about anything about selling art except for trying to sell some of my own. And I just wanted a place to, to open that was the opposite of Polygro, thus sanctuary. But many of us didn't know that there was a landing. We didn't know there, were any, there was any kinship, right? We didn't know there were people that were akin. I didn't know anything about folk art or outsider art. I just knew what I was attracted to and what I liked and what I was doing and what I could be inspired from. So this was a place to, to, to land and the community was always welcome to be part of that. And we were part of the greater part of the neighborhood too. The, art, the artists in this neighborhood um, that were creating art, for the most part, were using, were wanting to be able to sell their art to, to help to um, support themselves. And they also wanted to connect with an audience. So for even those people who were shy or those people who had been afraid or had never met anyone that had bought their artwork before or would be interested in their artwork, it was a place for that to happen. I found a bunch of artists that realized that it was a job and a lifestyle. It wasn't just, it wasn't just a calling. They knew that it, they had been given talents. There was no doubt about that. But it was also, it was also hard work. I, been surrounded by those kinds of words, intuitive, outsider, visionary, folk, um, naive, raw, childlike. Um, those are part of the vocabulary of educating maybe um, someone about when the gallery was there, how would you consider or classify this art? I never said, well, it's just art, don't you get it? You know, I mean, I never felt that that was a good answer. So that outsider, intuitive, naive, it, it seems very small when you put, stick it into the rest of the fine art world, but it's very big, it gives you a lot of room. It gives all those people a place to land, they're part of a group, 
And then that group in, in, in mass realizes that, gee, you know, this is as good as anything out there that comes from anywhere. And now there are some artists, maybe even in this community, who no longer want anything to do with those terms because maybe they felt restricted and confined from that. I feel the opposite. I feel that for myself, it's given me all the room in the world because all those terms give you a lot of freedom. Naive gives you a lot of freedom. Outsider gives you a lot of freedom to even go outside of what you're doing. Sometimes things start with the materials that are available. So what's available, what's something that they can use, whether it's the, the substance they're gonna paint on or the type of paint they're gonna use or what materials are available and at hand. And to me that signifies where the honesty starts because you have the basics of what it is that you're gonna work with. And oftentimes with those artists, it's things that are found. Art in its simplest form in neighborhoods, in collaboration with neighbors or property owners or other artists, mostly with other artists, transform those neighborhoods that nobody knows. That's the backstory again. That's the backstory like with say Art Prize and Hartside. So then you got, this, you got East Hills, and then you have Wealthy Street, then you have Hartside Park, and then you have a downtown market that locates next to that. There's all these incredible, simple things out of necessity for no one else is doing anything. And who's gonna, who's gonna do something? Who's gonna brighten a little bit of spot? Talking about folk art and naive art and simple art, what is it that makes them feel comfortable being able to do that. One of the things is, is that when you show them what you're doing, it's not threatening. Anything goes as far as creativity. We don't have a boundary here. We might have a theme, but that's like so loose that you'll be able to fit into that world easily, that universe. Work, working with, with other artists has been it, for me, it's freeing. I do a lot of things solo. It's not my favorite, you know. I'll have to admit that. It's not my favorite. My favorite would to be in, in team with a bunch of folks able to do without too much instruction what it is that they do best, all working on the same thing.